I don't know if we can hear you. I think you, you're muted there, Brent. Is it is it uh, Brent? Yes. We've got Brent on the screen now. Yes. Okay. Oh, we heard. <laughs> All right. I had to play around with the settings. No, I was just saying thanks for the introduction. You kind of stole the ten minutes of my presentation there, so. <laughs> um, let me get this out of here and uh, how do you sh uh, I'm not a big zoom user so uh, one second how do I screen share there's the big button mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yep. All righty. Um, sorry for the bad camera angle. Uh, I'm in the office here and um, laptops over here on the left, the big screens in front of me. So I might be looking forward, but I'm really looking at everybody. So um, yeah, so with that, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, as you, as uh, David had mentioned, um, we're going to talk about how uh, here at 329, we build uh, custom Gutenberg blocks uh, using ACF and some of the benefits of uh, why we do that. Um, and I, depending on time, uh, I was going to kind of walk through uh, some of some of the code from a more recent site that we uh, just finished, um, kind of show you what some of the possibilities are. Um, and um, yeah, just kind of show you around how we here within 329, we go about uh, doing it. Um, so with that, uh, the, you know, the mission of today's uh, presentation is uh, real simple. We're just gonna do like a kind of a high level overview of um, how we use ACF to create Gutenberg blocks. Um, so just a quick question, who ha has, do we have many uh, people that have used ACF uh, in their WordPress sites or um, have created custom Gutenberg blocks using ACF? Is this something that a lot of the people here do? Uh, I haven't done it yet, but the place I just, I started a new job today and uh, then I looked at today's meetup and I'm like, oh, look, we use ACF blocks uh, in Gutenberg in this new job. So yeah, great timing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So um, the reason I kind of asked that question is because I, I wanted to know, like, I didn't want to go like very low level with it if everybody's more experienced with ACF. If we have don't have a lot of experience with ACF, then I'll kind of make sure I hit some of those lower level um, features of ACF also. So, so, so Brent, I think you could probably hit a little bit of, I, I'm sort of experienced with ACF, but not a whole lot. So I'll bet there's a few okay. that are probably like that. So feel free to do a few minutes of, of that, so. Yeah. Yeah. So ACF, uh, for those that don't know, it's called Advanced Custom Fields. Um, they just recently released a major uh, update with 6.0, which was released uh, September 21st. Um, it's just a plugin that allows you or that makes controlling or using um, meta fields to control your content and data within your site. Um, some of the bullet points I have on here is it helps keep your CSS, CMS organized, uh, easily customize your content, um, and they have hundreds of uh, different inputs that you can use. And towards the end, I'll kind of show you some cool websites that have just, I mean, if you can think about it, they, they have it on there for you where you can uh, expand ACF. Um, 
The biggest benefit to using ACF is it really does speed up uh, development and um, simplifies the management of the content within the website. Um, oh, wait, hold on, there we go. Uh, so, um, why do we use ACF here at 329? Like I said, it allows, it gives us the ability to create real dynamic sites quickly. Um, ease of use for the end client, right? Um, nobody likes those, well, most developers don't like those calls where you get and, um, you know, it's like, oh, uh, there should be an apostrophe between the T and the S, right? And then you got to go in, you got to find the file, you got to change the code, you got to push it up to the, to the server. And so by using ACF, you can just go and modify that content uh, within, the, within the admin in the back end, and you don't have to modify any code or any files. It makes it super simple, um, quick to update. Uh, the ability to scale and customize the site. Uh, a lot of a lot of the blog posts and pretty much what we've been talking about up to this point is content entry, right? But we use ACF to control a, uh, the client's ability to customize the way content is displayed. Uh, a good example is that is if you have a 50 50 um, block, you know, a 50 50 block on the page and there's an image on the right and content on the left. But on another page, you have that same 50-50, just the images on the right are on the left and the contents on the right. Well, you can use ACF uh, to control the output of, or to control the structure of your template file um, and just allow them to quickly switch the content from left to right or the image from left to right. Um, so you can really get in real depth and I'll kind of show you an example of how we kind of do that here at 329, where we want to give the client full control to, um, to be able to, to lay out their site, right? We don't want to limit them to just what is coded. We want to give them options. Um, so, and then the biggest feature, um, that I think of is, uh, you know, everything's, you, you can build Gutenberg blocks in PHP, right? One of the struggles that I know a lot of WordPress developers have had with Gutenberg blocks is you got to go learn JavaScript and you got to go learn React and how all of that functions in order to, um, in order to build a Gutenberg block, right? Well, with, by using ACF, you can build that in PHP. You don't have to go learn React or JavaScript. Um, your most most people have a very low or very basic under, or very good understanding of JavaScript. So the knowledge that you have with JavaScript will help you. Uh, will make it easier to understand how uh, everything ties together. Um, but you don't know. You don't need to know how, how to uh, to create a block in uh, JavaScript. Um, so the first, so now we're going to kind of go into how we go about creating blocks inside or how, how we create blocks in our theme, right? How do we set up our theme, uh, to allow us to build Gutenberg blocks? Like what is the structure that we kind of use? And so what we do is inside the functions PHP, um, you know, you, all you got to do is, uh, make a call to the uh, ACF init function or hit that action, right? And then we're just, as you can see here on the screen, we're just passing in a custom function where all we're doing is we're going, we're gonna create a glob of all the directories inside the blocks directory, right? And then we're gonna loop over those, that directory and we're gonna pass each one of those directories into the register block type. Right, and, and then that register block type is going to look inside the directory we passed it for a blocks.json. And then it's going to create the block for us based off of that block.json. And I had mentioned about a, um, the recent update to ACF uh, with 6.0. And so this is part of that recent update where uh, now you can use blocks.json in order to create your blocks instead of having to 
the previous way you had to go and register them manually for each one of the blocks you do. By doing it this way, it allows us to just create a directory, um, put two default files in there, the blocks.json, and then the template that's going to be rendered. And that's it. We don't got to, nobody's got to remember to go back to the functions file and register that block, right? It's all done automatically uh, to kind of simplify the process. Um, so I was going to show you just a quick, uh, like, just kind of uh, here. So uh, I mentioned in the slide function in the functions.php file, <clears throat> right? Um, we do it in a file called ACF, and that's just because we consolidate all of our ACF um, uh, functions into one file, and then we're just including that file, right, into the functions.php. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with that process. But here's, here's this um, function that I was talking about, right? Very simple, not a lot of lines of code, um, and it just makes, I mean, it just simplifies the process. This is a great little function that um, we came up with. Okay, so that's, that's how you initialize um, your blocks, right? That's, how, that's where we start with creating our blocks. The next step is to do your blocks.json, right? And this is where um, things get di become different, right? For anybody that's done um, Gutenberg blocks with ACF, um, maybe in the past couple of years, I think it's been a, this blocks, Gutenberg blocks have been around for four or five years now. Um, so like I said, as of September 21st, I think it was, um, there's this new new way of doing it. The old way is still compatible and you can still do it that way. You know, everything's backwards compatible. Um, but I didn't want to come into this meeting and show you guys, um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to, to show you guys what's current, what's, what's, what they're recommending you do now. Um, and so, what they've done is they've basically uh, made it so that ACF works off of the nat uh, native Gutenberg block JSON file. So anything that you can put into a blocks.json file, uh, you can put into this blocks.json. The major difference that makes this work with ACF is this little ACF uh, object right here and <clears throat> kind of in the center. And so all we're, all you really got to do there is, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different settings you can set right there. Uh, you can do things like um, uh, the, the keyword, well, the keywords are above it. Um, God, I'm trying to think of something else off top of my head, but just to like, so here we're just setting the mode, right? And you can set it to preview or edit. And all that does is, Determine, tells ACF how you want the block to display in the block editor. Um, you're specifying your render template, right? What block, what file does it use uh, in order to uh, generate this uh, block? And then you can limit it to a post type. If you have custom post types and you only want this block to be available within that custom post type, you can specify that here. Um, and then I, I've put a bigger... Uh, blocks.json on this slide uh, intentionally. Uh, ours normally are not this big, um, but I wanted to kind of elaborate on just how, like, how extreme you can really get with this, right? In this example, you can see we have the support, the supports object right here in the center. And so those are telling this ACF block that it, you can use the native Gutenberg features on this, right? So the line feature, the, the anchor feature, um, you can set colors, you can set default colors, you can set the spacing. Uh, you can specify all of those things just like you can in just about any WordPress JSON file, right? Now you have the theme.json and all of those different, you know, different uh, configuration files that WordPress is coming out with. So you can, you can specify all of that right here. Um, 
the other great thing you can do on here is you can set the uh, preview, right? So once you build the block, you can set default, uh, default values for the preview so that it will generate the preview uh, when you hover over the block or the, yeah, the block inside the um, block editor, right? You know how the default ones have the preview state, uh, box that shows up on the side, you can specify that all in here and that all will work. That all will work with ACF. Um, so that's, that's like a kind of a full one. And just to kind of give you an example of what our block.json's really look like. I mean, that one's kind of intimidating, right? Cause it's like, oh my God, there's a lot there to consider. But when you get down to it, right? This is what our typical blocks.json will look like. It's I mean, it's only 17 lines. And the key things that we're doing here, right, is we're giving the, the block a name, right? We're giving it a, ti uh, a title, a description. We're assigning it to a category. We're specifying icons, keywords, right, all that stuff. Um, and then we're specifying the styles file, right? And where that comes in helpful, as I'm sure most of you know, with, with the native Gutenberg uh, blocks set up, right? They, own, they don't in, in queue the style files until that block is rendered. So, so if you're not using that block, then it's not gonna enqueue that CSS file, right? So that, that's very helpful when it comes to when you're really trying to improve on your page speed and stuff like that. So that's a very nice feature uh, that is now included into this. Uh, before you didn't really have that option. Uh, I think it was 5.8 where they really started allowing you to uh, specify individual CSS files and then queuing them um, with the block instead of. Uh, the other cool thing that this does, uh, I'm not, I might be off on my number a little bit, but I believe it's at 250. If, if the CS, CSS file is no, the screen is very blurry. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say. Um, oh, okay. Could, is anybody have any ideas on how to get that back? Maybe, maybe if Brent unshares his screen and then shares it again, because it's been. I think it's been stuck on your last screen. And it's yeah, it's like it doesn't like the transition between slides or something, Brent. Like right when you tried to transition to the next slide, it like stays on the last one. It stays blurry. Uh, let's try. Let's see, screen two. There we go. There we go. Hey. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Much better. All right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, so when it enqueues that file, if it's, I want to say it's 250 characters or less, then it's just going to inline that style. So it's not even going to try and enqueue anything. It's just going to straight up inline or uh, inline that style tag with that block, which is a big help when it comes to uh, your page speed and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So to kind of retouch back a little bit, um, since you guys were having problems viewing, uh, you know, this is our blogs blocks.json as you can see it's much smaller it's only 17 lines so they're not as, as as intimidating as they looked on the slide deck right like that one's really big there's a bunch of settings on there so if you don't need the setting you don't have to specify it uh, all you got to do is the bare minimum of what you want um, it will default to whatever uh, the default Gutenberg setting is for those settings so if it's turned on by default, then it will be turned on. If you want to turn it off, then you just specify it in here and set it to false and it'll turn it off. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the slide deck. Um, all right, so that's the blocks.json, right? Um, very powerful. Uh, it does use the new Gutenberg uh, API v2, which is nice. Um, and I did read a blog post that they're expecting, uh, I think WordPress is getting ready to launch the V3 version 
here in the within the next year. And uh, Delicious Brains did say that they are on track to launch relatively close to the same time for the V3 in ACF. So that'll be nice. I don't quite know what the benefits of our of V3 yet, though. I haven't done that much research to it yet. Um, okay, so this is kind of the bread and butter of uh, Gutenberg, or I mean ACF, right? This is where, um, like, you you spend the majority of your time building blocks, right? And up to this point, we've what we wrote 17 lines and then the other one was like 10. So like 20, we'll say 30 lines of code, right? So very simple up until this point. And this is where things start getting uh, interesting and, and where I really enjoy, where I really begin to enjoy this process, right? So um, ACF, it's basically just a collection of inputs that you can specify and then use within your template, right? So they have, uh, basically the way it works is you create a field group and then inside that field group, you add a bunch of fields. Uh, they have over 35 plus by default, um, but you can extend that, right? And you can build your own custom uh, fields to put, uh, to add to ACF. Um, the possibilities are just, I mean, I've yet to come to a, a, um, a situation that I could not figure out how to do it with ACF. Um, like I said, you can create your own custom inputs um, and there's hundreds of plugins that uh, I'll show you guys a website towards the end, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that will uh, a lot like, that just has a bunch of pre-built stuff that you can just extend it with. So maybe you wanna add um, you know, a, a, a focal point input on a, uh, on an image, right? You don't have to go write that code. Somebody else has already done it there. You just extend, you just add it to, uh, your WordPress site and it's, and it just naturally, it just works. So, um, I kind of want to spend a little bit more time right here and I'm going to, uh, pull up a site and, um, kind of go through, uh, some of the different inputs and stuff and how we kind of build out our uh, field groups. Uh, Cause to me, this is one of the most important pieces of using ACF, right? If you don't build out your field groups in a, in a good fashion, then uh, you know, you're not setting yourself up for success when you get to the next step, which is building your template. Um, so, but before I go into here, uh, I missed something that I wanted to do earlier, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you guys right now. I wanted to show you guys um, a site that we re, that we're currently. I mean, it's you could say it's still in development, but it's basically done and ready for the client to QA it, and that's for this company called Nikola Motors. And so this entire site was built using ACF. So um, I mean, everything from this this beautiful header you got right here. Um, and you can do video background, you can do image background, you can change the color of this font, you can change the little icon on the left, you can move it to the right. I mean, it's, there's tons of features that you can change in here, right? Um, you got these beautiful 50-50s here, some animations, right? So we got, you choose your animation and we do that based off of ACF, right? Um, so there's an ACF drop down where you can select what type of um, animation you want to attach to a block or a, a section, right? Um, the, the developer that uh, built this for us, his name's Corwin. He is on the, uh, the um, meetup tonight. So when we're all done, if you want to tell him it looks great, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. He did an amazing job with this site. Um, so, but I, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you guys this and the, the different possibilities, right? Like all of this, all of this content is managed in ACF. At first, just a kernel, a thought, a oh. what if, a maybe, the kind of thing you oh, can't get out of your video mind. on here. I was like, what's playing? <laughs> um, but yeah, so 
the reason I kind of circled back to show you this is because the field group I'm about to show you is going to be for this header right here, right? So we're going to kind of go through the process of how we built this uh, header block right here, the, the field groups that we added to it, um, and then what it looks like for the client in the block editor. And then uh, when we get to a template file, we'll go over how you build the template files. And then I'll show you the template file for this particular block right here. Um, so it, you guys can all see this, right? Everything's still working good. I'm seeing some head nods, so I'm gonna go with a yes. Um, sorry, I don't do a lot of Zoom meetings, so <laughs> I didn't Speaking think of Zoom, to... is there a way we can zoom this in just a little bit or uh, increase the font size? Uh, yes, I can zoom in. Uh, let's see. Is that better? Yeah, much better, thank you. All right, so uh, field groups, right? So this is this is the field group. So when you open ACF, oh, this isn't going to be zoomed in. Oh, yes, it will. So when you first open ACF uh, custom fields, right, you get this list of all your field groups, right? And for us, we use a naming convention of uh, block and then the block name or uh, this one right here is animations, right? And so that is used. Then we create a field group for animations, and then we clone that into different uh, field groups where uh, instead of having to write the selects, the, the, the field input for animations every single time, uh, ACF has a, feature, a really great feature uh, called clone. And so I can clone this field group into any other field group that I want to use. Um, but as you can see, uh, you know, very long list here of different field groups that we have. Um, so we'll go back to the uh, page hero field group, right? So uh, again, it's a block and then it's the page hero block. So that's, that's how we do our naming convention, right? And then we have um, right here, you have the type, the key, the name of the field and the label, right? And I point these out because they become important when you get towards, when you get to building your template file. So when you, when you start building and creating these, right? You wanna, you wanna think about your naming convention, uh, uh, you know, and start. You don't wanna have field groups with a bunch of names, like you don't want a bunch of field groups that all have uh, just a plain title uh input right because when you start getting in a database things can get mixed up a little bit so um you know yeah so um when you get when you go to create when you add a new field right um let's just go to the bottom we'll add a new field right here so when you when you first add a new field uh the first thing you get presented with is this field type and this is kind of where the bread and butter comes from. Uh, you can see they have a whole bunch of different field types that you can you can do here. Um, so a, a, just a, from a plain text input to a text area, to a number, right, an image. Um, so if I select image, then I give it a name, a, a label, and then a name, right? And so and they do a great job of explaining to you exactly what you need to be put in there. Um, then I can choose my re return format. Do I want an, an, uh, an image array? Do I want just the image URL? Or do I want um, just the image ID, right? Um, and I'll show you a little bit more of what this looks like for the client uh, when we get to the, the uh, block editor so you can kind of see full picture of like, this is what it looks like when you create it. And this is what it looks like when you're, you know, when you go uh, use it inside the block editor. Um, but I also wanted to show you like, there's this validation field, right? So I can set it as required. Uh, I can set the, you know, I can specify what type of images I want to allow them to attach, right? So I could put, 
uh, JPEG in here. Uh, I think it's yeah, comma separated. So I can say PNG, right? So now this input would be limited to only allowing the client to attach JPEGs or PNGs. Um, you can set maximum height, minimum height, minimum width, file size, all of that here. Um, then you get to presentation, right? I can provide instructions. So I can, uh, I can provide little, you know, paragraph underneath the input that explains what that in that in that field is going to do for the like the site. Um, I can set the preview size, that type of stuff. Um, and then there's conditional logic, right? And this is where we use this a lot. So I can say only show this field if, you know, um, background is sticky, uh, value is equal to check. So if I have a situation where it's, I want to um, use animations, for example, right? Instead of just giving the client a list of a bunch of different animations they, they can do, I could have uh, a checkbox that says add animation. And when they check it, it then will add the select, allow them to select an animation type, right? But it's not there by default. So it's not, it's not over confusing the client, right? The client's not seeing this giant list of fields that they got to fill out, right? Uh, you can really narrow it down and keep it nice and clean uh, for the client and simple so that, uh, you know, it's not difficult for them to manage. Um, let's see. So any other, so you have a WYSIWYG editor, right? This, this is just your default WordPress WYSIWYG editor. Um, some of the nice things you can do here is, where is it? Uh, so on the presentation, right? Um, I can set it up so that it, you know, on the WYSIWYG in the upper right hand corner, you have the visual view or the text or the uh, text only view. Um, I can set up the toolbar. Do I want to give them full toolbar with, you know, the attach and, uh, you know, if you have gravity forms installed, the ability to add gravity forms and all those cool things that get added to the WYSIWYG toolbar. Uh, I can I can limit that down to a basic so that they just have like basic text modification abilities. Um, there's the show media. I can delay the initial initialization. Um, you know, if I really needed to, if you have a whole bunch of WYSIWYGs, this can be helpful um, because then it won't actually load that toolbar and all of the stuff that goes with the WYSIWYG until they're editing that block. Um, so I just want to go through maybe one more of these that's useful that we use a lot. Um, we use this link field a lot. What this is real helpful for is when, when the client need like if you have a button, right? And with a button, you usually need like two minimum of two things, right? You need a title for the button and then you need a URL for that button, right? So but some, some things that get missed a lot, right, is like, do they want to open in a new tab? Um, and, and I guess that's pretty much it. But um, so what the link function does is it will give them a little pop-up and I'll see if I can find one to show you, but it gives them a little like modal that'll pop up where they have the ability to put in a title, a URL, and then it also gives them a list of all the different pages on the site um, so they can, you know, search for the contact us page and click on it and it'll automatically add the link for them. Uh, there's a little checkbox that says open a new tab. And then when you do your template, you can just pull all that information in and output your button. And uh, then that gives the client like the full, you know, more control over that button, um, where it goes, what it does, whether or not it shows that type of stuff. Um, so that's kind of fields. Uh, like I said, I feel like this is one of the most important pieces of it. Um, this is where the bread and butter really comes together, right? Without really knowing the capabilities of what you can do here, it's hard to really start understanding what you can do 
when it comes to building your Gutenberg blocks, right? I know the subject is building Gutenberg blocks with ACF, but how can you really know what blocks you can build unless you know what kind of uh, fields you have available? So if it's something you're interested, I highly recommend coming. Uh, they do have, ACF does have the free version that you can install on your site and just start playing with it and, and seeing some of the different options out there. Um, so let's go to the, um, the block editor here, right? So when you get into the block editor, right? If you remember when we did the block JSON file, uh, we had set the mode uh, to preview, right? And so when you set the mode to preview, this is how it will load for the client, right? It'll, it'll load up with all the content displayed um, in, in give you as close, you know, try to give you as close as representation as you get on the front end, right? So they can kind of see the, the layout of the page, right? Um, so, and then over here on the um, sidebar, right, is where we have our inputs, right? And so when we were looking at the, <clears throat> excuse me, when we were looking at the uh, block group, right, that first one was tab. And so what that was, it was that, that was this content tab, right? So we're, we're grouping our inputs by the type, you know, so like, the contents on one tab and the styles on another tab. And again, we do that just to make it easier for the client to manage, right? So here they're gonna put in all their content and then over here is where they can control the different styles, right? So, and I had told, uh, when I showed you guys the front of the site, I had mentioned that this block has the ability to do video or image background. And so right here is where they would change it, right? So right now it's on video so you can see you have the background video input right here. You got layout, right? Now, if I change this over to image, right? See, now I get this image selection tool. So I can click on add image and it takes me right to the media library where I can select any one of the images in the media library or upload a new one, right? Um, so I'm gonna put this back before I mess it up and Corwin gets mad at me. Um, but then, like I said, you know, it's not just about content entry. It's also about design, right? So here we have a layout, uh, option, right? So how do they want it laid out? Do they want it right aligned, uh, top left, right? So we have the ability to give them options while staying within the design that we've built for them, right? So we've said, Hey, here's, here's what your site's going to look like but we give them a few extra options in case they want to like just switch it up just a little bit. Right. Um, so, and then the text color, right. So they can choose white or black. So um, they can switch the text color here, uh, the color of the little arrow on the side. Right. So we're giving the client as many options as we can to stay within the design. Um, and so that's kind of what it looks like on, on the, uh, for the client, right? Um, and sometimes this gets a little clogged, clogged up. And that's where a lot of people start to like, eh, I don't know if this is right. But if we click up here, we can switch to edit mode and bring those inputs right here into the center. And so it's just bigger and easier for the client to uh, modify this content, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of how the blocks work. I, I hope that was a decent explanation, quick explanation of them. Um, yeah, so, oh, key part, key part. Um, down here at the bottom, right? So after we add all of our uh, fields to our field group, right? Now we have to tell this field group that it belongs to that new um directory, right, the template that we created, the block.json file that we created, uh, we have to say, hey, these groups belong to that uh, block. And so right down here at the bottom, uh, they have a settings section. And if you click on the drop down here, right, and this is where most people are used to using, for those that have used ACF, right, 
creating meta fields for a post type, right? Or um, a post template or something or a page temp or page, a certain page, right? So these were kind of like where ACF started was using these things. But as you can see now, I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can attach th these field groups to um, menus, right? That's a little outside of what we're talking about today, but that's also something we do a lot of, right? Down, we can attach it to a menu item. So if you have a menu item and you need to um, change the style of it based on some configuration, right? Like a good example is we'll have a button in the header and uh, we want to give the client the ability to choose which link is a button. So we'll add an ACF field that says is button and then they check it. And then in our template, we'll look for that value. And if it's checked, then we'll style it as a button, right? Um, but down here, all the way towards the bottom, you have blocks. So we're gonna select blocks. And then in this list over here are gonna be all the block, uh, all your block.json files, right? So when you create your block.json, you give it a name or a title, and that's what's going to show in here. And so then you just select the um, one that you want to attach it to and attach it. And now ACF knows that these inputs, so if you add that block to the, to the page, use these inputs. And so that's how you attach a block group to a block.json. Um, all right, so I think that's enough about fields and field groups. Um, just kind of a quick, again, if if you um, if it's some if this is something you're interested, in, I re highly recommend going and playing with this um, because I, I didn't even begin to scratch the surface of <laughs> what these th what field groups are capable of. Um, Something I found very interesting during my research for this was, um, for those that don't know, the, uh, ACF was recently just sold to Delicious Brain. I think I said that right. Um, and so when they uh, first purchased the company, they sent out this big survey like, hey, uh, what's your brand? You know, like if you could change one thing about ACF, what would it be? Um, and According to the blog post I read on Delicious Brain, uh, 90 was like 96 of percent of people all said improve the UI. Um, so that UI that I just showed you, this is the new UI that they just released within the last, I'd say, six months, maybe a year. Um, it's much cleaner. It's much nicer. Uh, the save button stays at the top. Um, but I just found that interesting that out of everybody that uses ACF, that was their biggest request, fix the UI. <laughs> so uh, I just put that little comment down here at the bottom about it um, as a reminder. So this is where, this is kind of what we've been building up to, right? The template file. Um, so the template file becomes, you know, one of the biggest benefits of building Gutenberg blocks with ACF is uh, being able to build a Gutenberg block in PHP, right? And so uh, that would, the way you accomplish that is with the template file. And so it's just your typical WordPress template file, right? You just have your PHP stuff at the top and then you have your HTML at the bottom and, um, and then you can render your, uh, the content. You can pull in the content from the ACF fields and then display the content in your HTML. Um, you use a fun, uh, an ACF function called get fields uh, in order to retrieve your data. Um, when we were looking at the uh, different field, when we were looking at the field groups, I had pointed out the uh, label, right? And uh, the name of the label name for your field group is the name that you would use inside your uh, get field in order to pull that content, right? So it's gonna use that to go out and find that ACF field within the database and then it's gonna give you whatever value is um, stored there. Uh, this one right here is a very simple um, 
template file. And here in a second, I'm gonna show you the actual template file for uh, that hero, that page hero. Um, so you can kind of see, but I wanted to just kind of give you a, a very simplistic, uh, like it's literally that easy, you know, view. So as you can see here, you know, all he's really doing is putting a container and then displaying an image, right, with a title and some copy text. That's about it, right? Very simple, very straight to the point. Um, and yeah, so like I said here, it's that simple, right? So uh, let's go ahead and look at a, um, a an actual uh, template file. So, um, you know, when, when I was showing you the function file, I showed you that we had that loop, right? That loops over the directory and then looks for the blocks.json, right? So this is the directory that we're looping over. It's called blocks. And then we're grabbing each one of these directories inside here and we're passing it to that uh, register block type, right? And then what it's looking for is inside that directory, a blocks.json, which is this file right here. It's gonna use this information to then link or to generate your, uh, your block, right? The uh, render template, right, inside this ACF object, we're saying, hey, use this template file, which is just right there in the same directory to keep it simple. And if we go look at this, right, like this is still fairly simple, but it looks, it's a little bit more intricate than just that simple little one I had on the slide, right? So you can see up here at the top, right, we're just grabbing the uh, the header text, right? The header title, the subtitle, right? And we're using this get field uh, function to grab it. Here, let me zoom in. Uh, that didn't zoom in. I see some people. Uh, where is it? View appearance. Zoom. Nope, that's not what I want. Hmm. How do I zoom this? I should have figured this out beforehand. Maybe uh, window. Size. Oh, that works. Increase font size. There we go. Is that a little easier to read? I'll go one more. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, we're just doing, uh, you know, we're just getting get field. There's that label that we talked about inside the field group, right? And then we're just storing it in a variable. And then we're going to do the same thing for all the background stuff, right? And then the theming, right? The different colors that we talked about, the layout, uh, the font color, and the arrow color, right? Um, here, all we're doing is just creating a, 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 an array of classes, right? So the way he did this is, when you select an arrow color, right? Uh, what it returns is just the class name. And then in his CSS, right? He has that class. And so it's that class is what sets the background color. Um, so this is a pretty common practice that we do here. Um, so, and he's just doing the same thing for all three of these, right? So it just returns the class name. And then we add that class name in to this class list. Uh, array and then uh, let's see where is he outputting that down here somewhere what is it class list classes uh, it's down here somewhere I don't see it off the top of my head. oh right here so here he's imploding it um, and then he's outputting it here he's attaching it to the section right so then he's doing the options, right? The shadow, shadow overlay, right? And he's conditionally doing, you know, he's doing some conditional stuff here. Is it sticky background, blah, you know, stuff like that. Is it a mobile poster? Um, and then all he's doing is just writing his HTML for the section, right? He's just doing a section, 
adding some classes, conditional, you know, adding a background image if it's there, and then outputting, or if it's a video, he's outputting the video player. Um, if not, there's, I'm sure there's an image in here somewhere, but, um, and then just doing, you know, the heading and subheading. And that's really all there is, right? It's, they can get really crazy depending on how many options you give the client, right? Uh, earlier I mentioned a case where you have like a 50-50 column, right? So we have two columns and we have an image on the right and content on the left, right? But we wanna be able to allow the client to flip those. So usually the way we would achieve that is we just say we would have a drop down that says content or image left or right, right? And so if they put right, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, if, if they select right, then I'm going to use, you know, the bootstrap class for reordering the uh, row or the columns, right? And so it's very simple for me to just switch that class based off of what they select. And then I'm just rendering that class into the class list and uh, it just you know will automatically switch the columns based on what they choose um yes yeah, so that's the uh template file like i said it it's very simple uh, i'm pretty sure everybody's used to doing something along this with along the lines of this with um you know doing um whether it's like an archive page or, um, you know, page.php or, you know, I'm sure everybody's built some kind of template file um, before. Um, so just with that knowledge and just learning how to um, do the setup for ACF and, you know, include that PHP or that include the, the file and the functions and then how to set up a blocks.json. I mean, you're pretty much off the ground, you're up and running um, from there. Um, so now to kind of recap, right? We talked, I, I kind of mentioned about the uh, release of ACF 6.0 um, and how it now uses uh, the blocks API v2, right? There is a plan to utilize v3 once it comes out um you know uh, we talked about how you can use php to generate uh gutenberg blocks instead of having to go out and learn javascript and react and how all of that uh works right um we talked about how uh acf blocks utilize all of the native gutenberg features um, if you can do it in Gutenberg, you can do it in an ACF Gutenberg block. Um, it allows, we talked about how it allows developers to scale and customize a site quickly. And I kind of demonstrated that with the Nicola site, right? That is a very intricate site. Um, and so being able to control that and give the client the ability to control it um, all while using uh, ACF Gutenberg blocks. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, is uh, we kind of touched on it was you can you can put ACF fields on if it on just about anything. Um, if you have WooCommerce installed, you can attach uh, an ACF field group to a Woo like WooCommerce products, right? You if it's a custom post type, you can basically attach it to it. Um, and I kind of talked about that with the the menu items, right? And how we use ACF to simplify uh, giving the client the ability to style their nav bar quickly and easily. Um, so the other thing I wanted, I kind of talked about was uh, you, this useful links, right? So obviously I had to include the link to just the standard ACF, right? Um, great product, I highly recommend it. ACF, awesome ACF. Uh, this is a website that I look at when I'm building blocks. Um, because, or I even look before I start a project because as I'm thinking about and developing in my head, how I'm going to build these blocks, um, maybe some new feature has come out or somebody has created some new 
uh, field or field uh, that will make my life easier or make make it better for the client. Um, so I wanted to open this up real quick and just kind of give you guys, you know, <clears throat> a, a quick view of what it is. Um, when I was talking about this earlier, I used the focal point, right, as an example. So if you look right here, this, this one right here just links out to a GitHub repo where um, basically they built a, uh, a field where it, you can allow the client to upload an image, right? And then it will display that image and, and then they can drag the little dot around the image and set the focal point, right? So you're setting the X and Y axis on the position of that image. Um, and so they can visually do it right in front of, you know, visually. And then all you do is it will return you um, the X and Y axis, and then you just output that into your CSS and, um, and you can, you know, choose where, where, how you want an image to display within that ability or within that div, right? Um, but this, as you can see, this list is super long. Um, so there's something you want to do. I'm sure somebody's already thought of it and uh, they have it in here to help you out. Um, so, and then ACF extends, this is another great program or plugin. Um, this just adds a bunch of, uh, features, uh, a bunch more features that you can use. This is a paid program or paid plugin. Um, but if you go check, check out their site, um, let's see, they do have a list here of the group. So this is just a long list of the different field groups. I guess it's not that long, that they offer um, that you can use. Uh, th there is a free version. And so if you use that, you just don't get the ones with the uh, pro label on it, right? Um, but this is another great plugin that we use on top of ACF a lot too, or we've used in the past. Um, so that kind of wraps up, uh, kind of wraps this up. Um, if anybody has any questions, I can do my best to answer anything I can. Um, if you want to see something else, be happy to try and show you. It's silent. Thank you. That's good. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Must be some now questions. we're here. We're here. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I got a question for you. I knew it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you uh, switched over from ACF through Classic to ACF through Gutenberg, did you have any trouble with clients like accidentally deleting the blocks or you know messing things up unintentionally? One of the things I liked about uh, ACF with Classic was I could kind of lock down the page so they could change what they needed to, but it was really hard for them to break anything. Yeah, so, um, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, that, is, that does happen. Uh, we, <laughs> we have had that happen a couple of times that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, one, one thing that we do uh, to kind of help eliminate that the best we can is uh, try to use revisions as much as possible. But um, you'd be amazed at, like, I probably got to say, since we started doing this four or five years ago, I can only think of maybe two or three times where that's been a problem. Um, but yeah, I can't think of, it's a very good point that we don't, I, I can't really think of, but aside from revisions, that's about all we can, uh, that I can think of off the top of my head that we can do to help prevent that. Yeah, I think there was some something about new locking blocks or partial locking blocks with recent Gutenberg updates. So maybe that'll help address my question too. Um, the other thing about uh, ACF Gutenberg blocks that held a lot of people back for a long time was um, the ability to embed blocks inside of blocks, right? And so um, I think it was version four, they included uh, what they call inner block, 
Um, so now you can allow client, like, so you can create, you know, uh, uh, two column block and then allow them to attack or embed like a, a P tag or a paragraph block and then a heading block and an image. Like, so you don't have to narrow it down so much. Um, you do have that ability to use more of the native blocks um, and just kind of create your structure, which is something we've been experimenting with, but we're not quite, we're not quite there yet because uh, that requires a lot of a little bit more work because then you got to style your you know your your uh default blocks a little bit better and you know you, you there's just more use cases that you got to consider yeah thanks anyone else <laughs> 